shall we begin? Let the games begin. All right, all right, all right. A new age has begun. An age of freedom. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Get to the chopper! This is going to be quite a ride. <laughs> Everybody and welcome to the Movie Pit Podcast. I am your host, Christian. Thank you very much for joining me on the podcast this week. It has been uh, a little bit. <laughs> I uh, I missed the podcast last week, and I apologize for that. That is because uh, I just had some technical issues that I didn't foresee happening and couldn't fix in time. I even re- re-recorded a section of the podcast that I had to re-record because the podcast gods were just not on my side last week. But... That being said, uh, I am back. Uh, I have a podcast for you guys this week. It's pretty. Uh, it's probably going to be a short one. Uh, there wasn't that much that came out this week. Um, it's kind of a short week. Uh, also last week, but last week I did put up the um, news up on the Twitter podcast. Um, or up on the Twitter po- on the <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, uh, on the podcast Twitter page, um, which will be which is linked down below if you want to go give it a follow. Uh, I'll probably be doing that for the foreseeable future if I ever miss a podcast. I try to do that when I miss a podcast, but sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. But I did do it last week, so there is that. Um, What else did I do? Well, uh, this week also, if you haven't listened to it yet, if you've been following me, if you follow me on the Twitter and Instagram for the podcast, you know that I did a very cool uh, thing personally for me, and it was uh, great to do. And um, I did an episode of the Three Films and a Podcast podcast. Uh, we talked about Disney's John Carter. Had a lot of fun recording with those guys. It was it was really fun. I can't wait to go back and do another podcast with them. Uh, but yeah, that that's up there. I'll try to link that. If I remember, I'll try to link that down below in the description slash show notes area as well. It was a lot of fun. So if you're not following those guys or don't listen to those guys, um, you should. And if anyone um, that's come over from their, for, from, from their fans to me, uh, hello. So uh, thank you for jumping over and giving my podcast a shot. But uh, like I mentioned, this is the Movie Pit Podcast where we talk about all of the big breaking movie news items of the week. We'll talk about the movie trailers that came out this week. And uh, Delta still hasn't taken out movie theaters again yet. So we will be talking about movies that are coming out in theaters and streaming this weekend for all your viewing pleasures. So uh, let's get right to it. We're going to talk about, of course, first, the movie trailers of the week. Coming soon to theaters. Quick thoughts on a few movie trailers that came out this week. Uh, The first one is Everybody's Talking About Jamie. Uh, That one is a prime video uh, movie that will be coming out on the 17th, or September 17th, I should say, uh, September 17th, so not August 17th, September 17th, uh, it, uh, it has Max Harwood in it, who's playing Jamie, a 16 year old who wants nothing more than to become a drag queen, and eventually he meets a former drag queen who mentors him, played by Richard E. Grant, uh, this movie's been bounced around a lot, it actually opened up back in 2017, to good reviews it was inspired by a 2011 tv documentary called jamie drag queen at 16 uh and it, like i mentioned it's been jumping around it was supposed to come out last year didn't come out last year uh because of covid and uh now it's finally coming out uh, and it's finally coming out on prime video so like i mentioned uh some good reviews for the movie so if you want to go check that out see the trailer for that anyway uh you can again coming out on prime video on september 17th so there's that uh, there was a really interesting trailer. I mean, I say interesting because I just didn't know anything about it. And um, I, I kind of like this new wave that's happening recently. Uh, it's a trailer for a movie called Wild Indian. And it's actually uh, a Native American um, set movie with Native American actors in it. Uh, one of them is Michael Gray Eyes. Uh, he's been in a lot of stuff. And for whatever reason, I just forgot to put what he was on my outline. But I know he was on Fear of the Walking Dead. Uh, I think he might have been in a couple episodes of Westworld and stuff like that. So, um, But he's a Native American actor, and he plays uh, Michael in this movie, a man who covered up a young classmate's murder decades ago and has moved on from his reservation and from his past. 
Uh, but when a man who shares his violent secret seeks him out, uh, presumably for revenge, it looks like, because he went to prison. I don't know if he went to prison for that or for something else, but he does get out of prison, at least from what the trailer shows us. Uh, Michael goes to great lengths to protect his new life, which includes his family, his new wi- his wife, and his new child, uh, his wife played by Kate Bosworth, from demons of his past. Uh, Jesse Eisenberg also shows up in the trailer. It looks like he's playing uh, Michael's boss in, in the movie. I don't know how big his role will be, but he does, he does show up in the trailer. Um, I didn't know anything about this movie or anything of it coming out or anything like that, uh, but the trailer is really... Uh, interesting. It's, it's, it looks like it's, it, 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 the movie is going to be a thriller and it does look like that. And, um, I don't know. It's, 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 it looks, it was a trailer to call me by surprise because it just looks really cool. It looks interesting. Um, uh, I, I didn't know anything about it. It does look like it premiered at a, at a festival because there was a lot of, you know, quotes in, in the trailer. But, um, oh, from all those quotes, it sounds like it's, con- it's actually pretty good. So, um, I don't know. Uh, this one's, this one did catch my eye. Uh, Wild Indian will open in select theaters and VOD on September 3rd. So we don't have too uh, long to wait for that one, if you're interested. Uh, other quick thoughts and some trailers that came out this week. A Journal for Jordan. This one is actually directed by Denzel Washington uh, and is based on a true story and follows First Sergeant Charles Monroe King, played by Michael B. Jordan, who meets a woman play, uh, named Dana it's Dana, sorry, named Dana, uh, played by newcomer, uh, I believe her, her, how you say her first name is, uh, Chansey, maybe, uh, Chansey Adams, uh, and the two fall in love, marry and have a son, while away on duty in Iraq, King writes a journal intended to show his love and give helpful advice on how to grow happy in spite of having lost his father. Yes, that is the synopsis, so we do know that Michael B. Jordan will die. Although from the trailer, it also kind of makes it seem like Michael B. Jordan dies. Uh, and it is based on a true story, uh, so I mean, we probably also know that, that, that as well. Um, but uh, this movie will open up in theaters in December. Uh, Denzel Washington, I think it's Denzel Washington at the end of the trailer, that says the movie will open in theaters in um december so uh there's no official date for the movie at least from what i can from what i was able to do a quick find of uh it was probably going to be coming around around probably going to be coming around out around christmas time uh so we'll probably this will probably be i don't know if we'll probably be in the awards race or not but um yeah it's coming out in december it looks looks fine it looks like you know i don't I didn't really have too much to 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 say about the about the trailer, um, other than it's you know Michael B. Jordan doing his thing and it's Denzel Washington behind the camera. So I mean you can't really go uh, you can't really do you can't really you know say too much bad about that. On the next trailer, that very quickly I want to talk about is uh, for a movie called Worth. Uh, this was interesting uh, because I I didn't know uh, maybe I did know and I just chose to forgot because it's so horrifying. Uh, this is a real thing. So the movie, by, by the way, the movie uh, follows Michael Keaton. He stars as attorney and renowned uh, mediator Kenneth Feinberg, who is appointed by Congress to lead the September 11th Victim Compensation Fund, uh, which he which is assigned with allocating financial resources to the victims of the tragedy. And Feinberg and his firm uh, and his firm's head of operations, uh, Camille Biros, I think that's how you pronounce her last name. Uh, so she is a real person, uh, potentially. Uh, is played by Amy Ryan in the movie. Face the impossible task of calculating the worth of each life and determining how to compensate the families who suffered uh, the losses on that fateful day. Uh, one person that keeps butting heads with uh, Michael Keane's character is Charles uh, Charles Wolf, played by Stanley Tucci, a community organizer mourning the death of his wife and, of course, trying to help the community out uh with uh with everything that happened that day uh so worth will stream on netflix on september 3rd like i mentioned i don't i don't know if i just didn't know about this or i didn't know about this or maybe i didn't know about this and just chose to forget it because it just sound and the trailer just yeah i don't i don't know (laughs) how to even talk about this because this is it the trailer presents it presents the story and what this fund is in a in the most you know helpful way but also in the most horrifying way because there's literally a shot in the trailer where it's michael keaton and he's looking over this book and it looks like he's looking over you know positions w- within the people that were in you know the, the one of the two towers 
and one of them i forgot what like what the label was uh for the one on top but it was obviously a lot more money than you know when he's you know zooms down or when he doesn't zoom down but when he goes down the list and it's like dishwasher and it's like less money than it's it's way less money than you know the person working up you know on a high floor or something like that and i didn't know again i, I don't know if i just knew i just forgot about it and maybe that's just you know just horrible to say out loud but that's just you know that's just the truth and you know i think I don't know if people knew about this one. Maybe they did, but I, I like I know about the firefighter um, fund um, that you know John Stewart was ahead of because that was kind of you know that made a lot of uh, mainstream news outlets and stuff like that. So I knew about that one. I didn't know about this one, and just you know n- just seeing that and just seeing just that shot alone, the one I was talking about right now with Michael Keaton, that shot alone was all but telling of what, um, you know, this person, this real life person, this, um, you know, uh, Kenneth Feinberg had to deal with. And, um, yeah, that's just, I don't know. Uh, that's, that that's movie. It's probably gonna be really good. It looks, it looks, it does look good. It does look like, you know, Keaton and Tucci, you know, have a lot of standoffs and it's very good standoffs from, you know, acting wise from, for when we see in the trailers, but it's probably gonna be very tough to watch. And, um, yeah, that, that, just want to mention that. All right, so those are the quick trailers I want to talk about. There was a one big trailer that came out that everyone has been anticipating for a while, and that is the new Nicolas Cage movie, which is called Prisoners of the Ghostland. Uh, so here's the synopsis of it, because it sounds downright crazy. And Cage has said, Cage himself has said that this movie is probably the wildest movie he's ever made. And they make it a point to put that in the trailer itself uh, from the quotes saying that this is the wildest movie that Cage has ever done. So here's a synopsis. Uh, In the treacherous frontier city of Samurai Town, yes, that's what they call the... Anyway, uh, a ruthless bank robber, played by Nicolas Cage, is sprung from jail by a wealthy warlord named The Governor, played by Bill Mosley, whose adopted granddaughter Bernice, played by Sophia Bontella, has gone missing. The governor offers the prisoner his freedom in exchange for retrieving her. Strapped into a leather suit that will self-destruct within five days, the bandit sets off on a journey to find the young woman and his own path of redemption. This movie, just from the trailer alone, looks batshit crazy. (laughs) It is... It's yeah, I, I don't I don't I don't know. I mean just the, the fact that it's Nicolas Cage in a leather suit with explosives on his suit, um, because they make it a point in the trailer to show that his suit is wired to explode if he doesn't come back in five days or if he doesn't do anything or if he doesn't do something in particular because it looks like in the trailer like he's gonna do something maybe he's like attacking the governor or something at some point like off screen and one of the things goes off uh so i mean doesn't blow him up but it just it's like it's like a little warning sign um so yeah that that itself is interesting um the ghost land by the way is actually like this town from the looks of it it's like this kind of like this weird kind of like mad max um remember not necessarily mad max i don't know how many people saw this but um how was it called was it called the bad batch I can't remember what it was called. Not the Disney show. Um, how was that? What was it called? That was called. I can't remember what it was called. I think it was something along those lines. It was a movie like Keanu Reeves and Jason Momoa um, that came out. It was like set in the future, and it kind of looks like that a little bit. The town itself. If you know what I'm talking about, you you probably know what I'm uh, trying to say. But it's it's this town like in the in the middle of the desert or something like that, and it's just like walled off, and there's just all these people that are you know that are there, and it's it's like, it's like run by one particular person. Um, so yeah, it just it looks kind of crazy, and it looks like that's where he goes because that's potentially where she is, or maybe where she passed by. And yeah, it's just the trailer itself is just you know there's a lot going on in the trailer that's it's really hard for me to pinpoint just one thing. There's at one point it looks like there's an actual like samurai. I don't know if it's Nick. Cage. I don't. It's not Nick Cage. I know it's not Nick Cage, but uh, the camera moves so quick that it's kind of hard to tell who the actor is. Um, but there's a point where someone with a samurai sword is attacking a bunch of people. So this movie looks absolutely crazy, and I cannot wait to watch it when it does come out. It doesn't come out, uh, we don't have to wait too long, because it comes out next month on September 17th in theaters, digital, and VOD. Um, this is definitely something that jumped to the top of my list to watch, but just from the trailer itself. So, and Nicolas Cage is killing it, apparently. He has that, uh, that other movie uh, called Pig that has been getting a lot of 
great reviews and people are saying that pig is genuinely good uh so i definitely want to you know watch that one as well so yeah uh nicholas cage just you know a lot of people like to make fun of cage but you know he's he's doing stuff that he likes and for the most part it looks like he's doing things that a lot of people tend to enjoy uh recently so you can't blame the guy all right don't don't blame nicholas cage he's a national treasure all right uh let's move on to the let's move on i make myself laugh which is really what i have to do on this one person podcast uh but that's okay those are all the trailers that came out this week at least at the time of this recording uh, all those trailers are linked down below in the description slash show notes area if you want to go check those out let us move on to the rest of the podcast which will include the movie news items of the all right so this week's uh, like i mentioned at the beginning of the podcast it was kind of a light week this week so a lot of this stuff is kind of self-explanatory some stuff that i don't really uh feel like i <laughs> don't really feel like honestly i need to go that deep deep into but we're gonna talk about it anyway so we're gonna do some quick fire movie news items uh for those by the way who uh i haven't really done quick fire recently because it just feels like everything is kind of self-explanatory and stuff i just really want to go into but quick fire usually um you know probably when things go back to normal uh you know whenever that is uh quick fire is usually movie news items that um i uh want to mention just because the people involved or because it's the project sounds interesting or stuff like that but again they're pretty much self-explanatory and then you know i just want to mention like this first movie news item uh warner brothers has made a deal with amc theaters that will see the studio have an exclusive 45 day theater window next year uh they have a similar deal with regal cinemas uh that they made earlier this year obviously warner brothers is trying to get back in the good graces of movie theaters um by going back to a normal uh release schedule having all their movies coming out in theaters next year as opposed to this year where you know they announced that they were going to release all their movies this year on in theaters and on hbo max which pissed off a lot of people including filmmakers that uh had already done movies that the studio was going to be released so um or that they were going to release so there is that so they're kind of just making up for that so there there is that uh, some small casting updates on projects. Um, Clancy Brown has joined the cast of John Wick Chapter Four, which is already uh, which has already started filming. They've been filming for a, probably about a month now, I think, something like something along that. Uh, but n- nowhere on who his character uh, is going to be. John Lithgow has joined the cast of Martin Scorsese's Killers of the Flower Moon, which is itself set in the 1920s Oklahoma. The film depicts a serial murder of members of the oil-wealthy Osage Nation tribe, a string of brutal crimes that came to be known as the Reign of Terror. Lithgow will now join Leonardo DiCaprio, Jesse Plemons, Lily Gladstone, Scott Shepard, and Robert De Niro, uh, which I believe will start filming if Actually, no, they already started filming that, too, um, because there was a set picture of uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Lily Gladstone. So they already started filming that, So uh, he's because he's joining the cast a little bit late on that. Uh, Andre Brower has joined She Said, the journalism drama that is based on the real-life New York Times investigation of Harvey Weinstein. He'll play the Times' executive editor, uh, Dean Baquet. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. I, I could be wrong about that. Uh, I probably am wrong about that. Uh, Carrie uh, Mulligan and Zoe Cass Kazan will play reporters Megan Toohey and Jody Cantor, uh, while Patricia Clarkson will play Rebecca Corbett, the at time, uh, the other time editor who oversaw the investigation itself. So there you go. So the film is based on the best-selling novel of the same name. She said, along you know with a subtitle uh, that's very long. That I didn't want to write into my outline, but um, it's supposed to be the book's supposed to be very good. And of course, the investigation led to Harvey Weinstein going to jail where he belongs because he's a scumbag. Uh, so. <laughs> So there is that. Um, more have joined the West Anderson next film. Margot Robbie, Rupert Friend, and Jason Schwartzman have all joined West Anderson's next untitled film, which will begin production this month in Spain. They will now join Adrian Brody, Tilda Swinton, Bill Murray, and the also recently joined Tom Hanks, who joined, I believe, last week. Uh, yes, he did, because we didn't talk about that. Uh, so uh, reports are saying the cast will be larger than most Anderson films, which is saying something since... Most of Wes Anderson's films have a pretty big cast, pretty big name cast in nature, so that should be saying something. It's also expected to be a pretty quick shoot since the reports are saying that the shooting is expected to wrap in late September. Uh, the next quick fire movie news item is that, or the last quick fire movie news item, I should say as well, uh, Yahya Abdul Mateen II, aka, aka, aka uh, the man who played Dr. Manhattan in the Watchmen TV series, it was also Black Manta in Aquaman. And he will be returning 
to play Black Manta in Aquaman 2, has joined Warner Brothers' new dystopian crime movie, By All. The movie will be directed by Stephen Campbell Jr., who directed Creed 2, which is being developed as a potential franchise for Abdul Mateen. Uh, being described as a cross between Collateral and The Warriors, the movie will follow Dante, a man struggling to make ends meet who was forced to go on a it was forced to go on the run in a police free world where justice is crowdsourced. That sounds very frightening. The movie will be written by Joel Taylor and Tony Rentmeyer, which is based on a short story that they wrote themselves. So this should be uh, pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, that, the whole the police free world and justice is crowdsourced to the public. That, that I, I don't know. That seems very Twilight Zoney. It also seems like um, probably could be a good idea. It also probably. Probably not in most parts of the country. Uh, so <laughs> there you go. All right, so those are the quick fire movie news items. Let's move on to the big movie news items of the week. The first one is a pretty big one, and it's a pretty big one in nature. Itself, probably not that big because it's, you know, in the time that we're living in, but it's a pretty big one in nature considering why they're moving it. Uh, Sony Pictures has delayed the release of the somewhat anticipated Venom Let There Be Carnage from its September release date to October 15th. Um, before we get to, you know, why uh, the movie will now share the box office with Ridley Scott's new film, The Last Duel, with Matt Damon, Adam Driver, and Ben Affleck, but also with Halloween Kills, which... Okay. Uh, the reasoning is, of course, because of COVID cases going up on the rise again, and now we have the Delta variant coming out. There's that other variant that's uh, so that's also running out uh, running out there. That's I don't think I don't think it's hit the U.S. yet, or maybe it has. I can't remember. But um, but yeah, there's the Delta variant, and then there's the other variant. Anyway, uh, Sony is now also considering what to do with Hotel Transylvania Four. One of the moves could be to move it up to the original September 24th release date that Venom uh, Let There Be Carnage had, delaying the movie altogether to, um, you know, to to next year or something like that, or when, you know, it looks like it's going to be better, or uh, selling it off to a streaming service, most probably uh, Netflix and Sony and Netflix now have that uh, deal they have that they made earlier this year. Uh, this isn't the first move, uh, or this isn't the first movie that's been pushed back this year. Uh, I believe it was last week, which we didn't talk about. Or maybe we did talk about it. Um, I can't remember now. Everything is starting to blur. Uh, but Clifford the Big Red Dog movie adaptation was completely taking off its, the release schedule by Paramount Pictures because of the pandemic. They also believe that the movie, um, you know, what was a, was a big hit for them. So they did. They wanted people to watch it, and there's no word yet on whether or not they want to uh, drop it on Paramount Plus. And while it's probably wishful thinking that things will once again slow down by the time October runs around, I, again, being a, you know, pessimistic person, uh, a slightly pessimistic person by nature, I highly doubt it. Uh, I hate to say it, and I don't want to say it, because I feel like if I say it out loud, it's going to happen. But this could be the start of studios delaying movies again. And I really hope that's not the case, because... Again, it finally start, you know, vaccination numbers were going up on the rise, but then COVID numbers were also going up on the rise. Delta variant numbers were going up on the rise. That other variant that I, you know, can't remember the name of also is starting to come into play. This is just, it's, I just, I, I don't want to say it, but I feel like when October rolls around, you know, there's going to be a lot of, like, I just, I don't want to come on this podcast again every week and start saying this movie got delayed this movie's getting delayed this movie got pushed back this movie got pushed back a few weeks oh and then a few weeks later oh this movie's getting pu pushed back another few weeks you know it started off very slow last year you know last year it was announced that no time to die was gonna get you know it was supposed to come out really early uh and then they pushed it back to the end of the year and they're like okay that's fine that's fine no problem with that uh most james bond movies coming out uh come out at the end of the at the end of the year okay that's fine but then a quiet place 2 got delayed a few weeks and they're like okay that's fine and then obviously we know what happened there so i don't know what's i don't know I, I i hope that this isn't the start of something that we've seen before i really hope that that's not the case okay Let's move on. Let's move on to something else. Uh, Idris Elba. Let's move on to Idris Elba. Uh, he will voice Knuckles 
in Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Some uh, early reported plot descriptions uh, read like this. Sonic is ready for more freedom and Tom and Maddie agree to leave him home while they go on vacation, but no sooner than they're gone when Dr. Robotnik comes back, this time with a new partner, Knuckles. In search for the emerald that has the power to both build and destroy civilizations, Sonic teams with his own sidekick, Tails, and together they embark on a journey to find the emerald before it falls into the wrong hands. Uh, James Marsden and Tika Sumter will return as Tom and Maddie. Uh, Joe, uh, Jim Carrey will also return as Dr. Robotnik. And Ben Schwartz will return as the voice of Sonic. Also returning is director Jeff Flower. So we have that in store for you. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 does currently have a release date of April 8th, 2022. They have already started filming on that as well. There were some set pictures uh, of that already. Uh, some stand-ins of Sonic and I believe also of Tails and Knuckles. So I think we already kind of knew that Knuckles was going to be in the movie uh there was rumors that jason momo was going to voice knuckles but it does now look like ito salba who broke the news himself on social media uh is going to be voicing knuckles so that's pretty cool uh and fans seem to be pretty excited about um Ichiro Saba playing uh, or voicing Knuckles, so yeah, I'm excited for that too. Uh, moving on, Jennifer Lawrence is set to play famed late Hollywood agent Sue Mengers. I think they pronounce her last name. I apologize if that's not how you say your name. Um, in a biopic that has reportedly started a bidding war between Apple and Netflix, the movie will be directed by Paolo Sorrentino, who directed uh, The Young Pope. Uh, I believe that was the HBO series, right? I believe that was the HBO. Series. Anyway. Um, with a script written by Lauren uh, Shucker Blum, who is the, uh, I believe, the wife of Jason Blum from Blumhouse Productions, uh, Rebecca Angelo and John uh, and John Logan, uh, with Logan actually having written a stage play about uh, Menger's life, uh, where uh, Bette Midler played Menger on the stage play, so he has some experience with that. And Menger's for those who don't know, like I like I did, I don't know who she was, uh, but apparently she was someone you did not want to stand in her way uh, because she got what she wanted. In the 60s and 70s, she helped build the, she helped the biggest clients land uh, record-breaking deals and championed for young rising scarlets, such as Candace Bergman, uh, Sybil Shepard, and Faye Donaway. Uh, she also represented people like Barbara Streisand, Cher, Steve McQueen, Burt Reynolds, Gene Hackman, Michael Caine, and Brian De Palma, just to name a few of those uh, people that she named. So obviously she was a very, very big deal. Uh, Menders did have some competition in the late 70s by other agencies when they started, you know, doing some weird uh, backdoor deals and, and, you know, sabotaging and stuff like that. So I'll probably mention that in the movie. Uh, but Menders did pass away in 2011 at the age of 81. She was very highly respected and a lot of people seem to be very on board with this kind of happening. Jennifer Lawrence herself, uh, I saw a picture of her and Menders side by side and i mean kind of she kind of looks like her a little bit i mean you know biopics tend to you know um you know you don't have to exactly look like the person as long as you get you know the mannerisms and the attitude right but um i don't know I, maybe it was just the picture of uh, how uh, the picture that i saw but they look, they, yeah she kind of looks i mean she doesn't look exactly like her obviously but um that's pretty close i'm not gonna lie so um yeah and biopics obviously um Biopics obviously have a very um, hidden miss quality because sometimes they just want to uh, share the, uh, the the all the positives and and the the, the right side the light side if for lack of a better word for lack of a better phrase uh, of the person and not the you know bad things they used to do uh, but uh, I don't know how they're gonna go about that one but um, more you know more power to them if they, if if they can get the name out there of this person who obviously was very influential in Hollywood and uh, lay the groundwork for um, a lot of these actors that we all know and love and directors like Byron De Palma all right moving on uh, this is actually the last movie news item, at least at the time of this recording. So if anything, obviously, big drops to talk about it next week on the podcast. And I will also drop it on the Twitter page, like I mentioned uh, before, at the beginning of the podcast. Uh, the working relationship between Jungle Cruise stars Dwayne Johnson and Emily Blunt will continue as they will actually work together to produce a film for Amazon Studios about Kate Warren. I think that's how you pronounce her last name. Uh, Warren was actually the first woman to become a detective at the Pickerington Agency. The movie is described as an action-adventure built around Warren, a real-life female Sherlock Holmes, in a male-dominated industry whose singular skills paved the way for the future of women in law enforcement and forever changed how detective work was done. Uh, I don't know anything about who she was, so this is pretty cool. Uh, again, yes, she is a real person. In case you did, in case you needed to know, she was a, a real person. I forgot to mention that, but yes, she 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 was real. Uh, so this 
in a way, will also be a biopic in, in, in some instance. Uh, Blunt and Johnson will produce through their respective production banners. Johnson through his Seven Bucks production. I didn't even know Emily Blunt had a production company, but apparently she does. And it's called Ledbury Productions. So there you go. Uh, Blunt will also star in the film as Warren herself. So that's, that's, that's yeah. Uh, no word on when the movie will go into production. But with the announcement, it will keep fans happy until, that, until then. Uh, Johnson and, and Blunt had tremendous chemistry in Jungle Cruise. Uh, I think that's one of the the hallmarks of that movie, and what keeps that movie together is their chemistry together. So, uh, and, the, and they had a it looks like they had a really fun time working together. Um, and from the press uh, junket that they had, they had a lot of fun being together uh, because they were laughing it up. Uh, every, every picture, every video, every interview, it looks like they're just having a great time. So, uh, it looks like they have it looks like they had very fun time working together, and they actually genuinely like each other as friends and want to keep that working relationship going and i'm all for it really i am so and this is it's pretty cool i i you know again i didn't know who she was i don't know who kate warren was i don't even know if i'm pronouncing her last name right but um this is pretty cool i'm all for it and anytime we get to see emily blunt on the big screen or in, in a lead role i'm i'm all for it to be honest all right, uh, so like I mentioned, that was all of the movie news items that came out. So again, at least at the time of this recording, again, if anything big drops, I will talk about it next week on the podcast, and I will, you know, also talk about it on a, a, a pay or the Twitter page as well. So that being said, let us move on and let us talk about the movies that are coming out in uh, that are coming out this weekend, and I was said just in theaters, but are coming out in theaters and streaming for all your viewing pleasures. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Alright, so we're going to start off with the streaming side of things, uh, both of which are for Netflix movies. Uh, and again, if I miss anything streaming-wise, I apologize. You know, obviously streaming is a little bit harder to get um, intact uh, because, you know, it's streaming and sometimes uh, you don't know movies coming out until it just comes out on streaming uh, that week. So I apologize if I miss anything like on Hulu or, or Prime Video or anything like that. So, but Focusing on Netflix here, we got two Netflix movies that are coming out this weekend, uh, one of which already came out, and it's The Kissing Booth 3. Uh, I know The Kissing Booth is a very popular little series. I don't know why I, I, don't know why I said it like that. It's kind of sounded like I was demeaning it. I've never seen the movies. I'm sure they're good. Um, they're just not marketed toward me. But um, <laughs> they're movies that came out. Uh, they have a very, uh, they obviously have a very big fan base, obviously. And they made three of these movies. Um, so if you're interested in that, you can go ahead and watch that. Again, not marketed toward me. I didn't mean to demean it when I said that thing. I, I apologize. I don't know why. Uh, uh, that was bad. I'm not going to cut it out either. I make mistakes. See, I'm like everybody else. Anyway, the next <laughs> Netflix movie coming out is Beckett. Uh, it follows a tragic accident in Greece. Beckett, played by John David Washington, an American tourist, finds himself at the center of a dangerous cons- uh, political conspiracy and on the run for his life. Alicia Van Kender is also in the movie. Uh, it looks like she actually plays the girlfriend of John David Washington and somehow disappears. So maybe she's connected to it in some way, at least from what the trailer kind of gives away. Uh, Boyd Holbrook is also in the movie, as is Vicky Crepes from The Phantom Threat or A Phantom Threat. Uh, they're all in there. This looks pretty good. Looks like a really good uh, conspiracy kind of thriller. Kind of reminds it kind of give, gives off an enemy of the state kind of vibe, but uh, a little bit leans a little bit more into kind of like the thriller aspect. Uh, I like John David Washington. Uh, I think um, we should be getting a lot more roles from him uh, because I think he's actually pretty good. Uh, I like Alicia Van Kander uh, as well, though she probably is not going to be in the movie that long. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. So there you go. Uh, let's move on to the movies in theaters. We have three movies that are coming out in theaters this weekend. The first one is Respect. It is the life story of legendary R&B singer Aretha Franklin, which is played by Jennifer Hudson. Uh, Forrest Whitaker, Mark Marin, Marilyn, uh, Marlon Wayne's. I almost said a different name there. Uh, and Mary J. Blige, all co-star in the film. Uh, I've been hearing some very mixed things about this one uh, from what I've seen anyway, from what I've been seeing. Uh, most of them kind of on the negative side of things. Uh, so I don't know how um, uh, how that works out. But uh, yeah, I, don't know. I mean, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't know what to say on this one. I know that Aretha Franklin actually kind of handpicked jennifer hudson to play her in a biopic if they ever did a biopic about her so that's pretty cool but um you know the reviews aren't probably helping this movie out in any way of the imagination so let's move on uh, to the next movie which is don't breathe 2 uh this is directed by uh roto Sayus, 
I think it's how you pronounce his last name. I probably should know how I pronounce that last name. Uh, but he co-wrote uh, the first movie with uh, Fede, Al- uh, Fede Alvarez, who directed the first movie. Uh, and he also co-wrote this movie as well. This is actually his doctoral debut. Uh, so there, there is that. Uh, this takes place years after the first movie, where the blind man now lives in a quiet solace until his uh, past sins catch up to him. Uh, Stephen Lang, of course, returns to play the blind man. Uh, I don't know about this one. Apparently, the reviews are pretty good. Uh, people are saying this actually is um, a pretty decent sequel, but uh, I haven't read anything too in depth about it. Just in case, you know, I get the chance to go watch this, or just get you know in theaters or or um, catch it, uh, catch it, you know, when it comes out on on digital. Uh, I, so yeah, I don't know because it it. You know, the blind man in the first movie, not, not the greatest guy, you know, not, not, not necessarily a hero. And they're kind of, you know, from the trailers and kind of, it kind of makes it look like he's playing the hero. So I think a lot of people were very skeptical on, on that part. And I like Stephen Lang. Stephen Lang's really cool. I got the, the chance to, uh, watch Don't Breathe a few weeks before it came out, uh, at a, at a horror film festival that took place here in Chicago. And uh, Stephen Lang showed up. He was actually there. And he was doing this interview. And he's really cool, man. He was a really cool guy. And we got to talk to him. And he was really awesome. And But I don't know. Um, the blind man himself, pretty pretty bad person. So I don't know if it's the best idea to make him a hero. I don't know how that's going to work out. But we'll see how that works out. And finally, the last movie coming out in theaters is Free Guy. This is directed by Sean Levy, who, of course, directed the Night of the Museum series, Real Steel. Uh, this is where I leave you which is a comedy drama movie, which is actually pretty good. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend that one. And of course, he's responsible for uh, for Stranger Things as well with the Duffer Brothers. But uh, Ryan Reynolds plays a bank teller who discovers is actually an NPC, non-playable character, inside a brutal open-world video game. Jody Cormer also stars Joe Carey, Little Ray Holly, and Taika Waititi. Uh, the reviews for this one are actually really good. Uh, people have been, uh, are, are apparently very surprised about Free Guy. They're saying it's one of the surprises of the year. Um, I don't know what that meant about their anticipation for the movie beforehand. Uh, I remember when I first read about it, I was like, huh, that sounds, uh, that sounds interesting, I guess. We'll see, we'll see how that works out. Uh, I know some people are very, um, divided on Ryan Reynolds. I myself am still a Ryan Reynolds fan. I, I, I do like ryan reynolds um as an actor and as a person um so i was looking forward to it anyway and then um the trailer came out and it was it seemed really interesting it seemed pretty cool it seemed pretty funny and uh now you know we have the movie coming out and um people are saying they really enjoy it people are saying they really like it saying it's funny has a lot of heart uh ryan reynolds is good in it uh, the cast is great in it as well so i'm looking forward to it i actually have a uh, private screening of um free guy coming out we rented my family and i rented out theater we're gonna go watching that uh tomorrow saturday uh so i will let you guys know how i feel about it on my instagram and twitter and uh and yeah i'm looking forward to this uh i am uh, you know i like sean levy sean levy does some pretty good stuff every now i don't know what that was i don't know if the camera picked it i don't know if the vid- or the mic picked it up uh but yeah i'm looking forward to this I, i'm really excited about this and i can't wait to see um what they do with it uh so yeah We'll let you know how that turns out. But uh, but that's it, everybody. That's all I have for you guys this week on the podcast. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, I very much appreciate it. Uh, like I mentioned, it was kind of a, a bit of a slow week this week. Don't know what's going on. Uh, I think people are just kind of holding off on stuff because, again, of COVID and, and Delta and everything else like that. So, uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast this week. I very much appreciate it. What no matter where you're listening to. If you're listening to this on YouTube, if you're listening to this on Spotify, on Stitcher, or on um, YouTube, uh, Apple podcast. Uh, that was the other one. Uh, I don't even know where I am anymore. Uh, but thank you guys so much for, you take one week off and all of a sudden you just start, start getting rusty again. Uh, so I apologize for that. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast this week. Have a very good, fun, safe weekend. Be sure to keep masking up social distance, wash your hands, uh, and most importantly, be good people. And I will see you guys next week. Remember to keep watching movies. Woo-hoo! Yeah! Give it up! Movies!